are live. Welcome, friends, to the Collectors Series on Luca Nation Network. I am your host, uh, DPZ, and with me I have Jeremy from Reckless Cards and Manny from the, the Too Thick Pod. This episode is going to be lit. There is going to be a lot of fun conversations and discussions. It's not going to be dramatic. It's going to be fun. And we're going to have uh, some colorful conversations with some humor interjected because these two guys are characters and they're going to make you laugh and they're going to make you cry and they're going to make you spend money. No, I'm just kidding. We're not, that's not one of those episodes. We talk about collections. We talk about the things we love to collect. Guys, gentlemen, thank you for being on the show today. DPZ, thank it is an honor and a pleasure to be graced by your presence. Thank you for having us. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to just do this because, you know, it's a safe space, but, um, and this isn't live, you know, but um, I think we're going to be airing this episode and people are probably going to be watching that, watching this episode here soon, um, maybe sooner than this weekend. Mm -hmm. But I, I want you, I wanted to give uh, Manny especially an opportunity to, I mean, you got everybody's probably in the hobby by the time this airs has, has been, has watched the infamous live <laughs> between Andrew, our, our Andrew. Or, um, on Luca, Luca Tiger Bronze and Bro Namath and Vadim. So I just, I think, you know, maybe there's a great, this is a great one so that, you know, we all, everybody can move on potentially. I, I don't know. How, what do you guys think of that conversation? Um, anything you want to say or you want to respond to? How you want to respond to that? Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone that's reaching out in the DMs that, uh, that's been watching me since I was in Luca Nation, right? Um, I used to do content for uh, Luca Nation, helped with clips, helped with videos. We had an overreaction show with Cage and an auction show. And the ones that reached out after the comment that was made, I do appreciate it. Um, means the world to me. Um, so I do want to say that. And Bro Namath and Vadim and whatever they had going, it just seemed like it was boiled. It was boiling up and it just like, you know, those pimples that it just needed to be popped. So um, it's, it just happened. So maybe everyone can move on for now. Definitely. Definitely. Jeremy, anything you want to add? Yeah. Well, I mean, I was at work today and I'm in the beautiful state of, of North Carolina. The sun is yeah. shining on me. I need the SPF 50. You know, everybody's back home in the Detroit land, freezing and cold. And I've got a project manager calling me with this great news that a project that we've worked on for, a substantial amount of time we, we we won the job today but i was i couldn't answer the phone i had my popcorn popped and this might be the best thing that i have seen since cocaine bear from an entertain entertainment perspective <laughs> um you know I, we, we our, our tagline for too thick is sports cards and levity and so i'm a big believer in trying to you know find humor in situations um you know i applaud those gentlemen for getting on and hey, having let's a, okay. This time out, we actually lost everybody there for about a minute. We probably lost all the really cool stuff you just said. So <laughs> let's uh, go back and kind of give a, a nice place where, you know, maybe the, the team can can clip here. So I'm going to come to this, and this maybe this will be a place where Andrew can clip it. So, Jeremy, what did you think of what happened today? Oof. Oof. So I thought Cocaine Bear was the best thing that I had seen in a hot minute. Um, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately... Andrew, Vadim, and Brandon said, here, take the popcorn, and we're going to one-up you. Um, you know, the tag for Too Thick is sports cards and levity. Um, this truly yeah. is hobby for us. It's escapism. Uh, we don't make any money in this space other than the cards that we buy and sell. Uh, and so it, it is hobby. And so I have a, a personal relationship with Manny. We've grown close. Um, we have the same moral compass, the same the same, you know, the same ethics. We're both family men. We both work. And I do know um, I'm privy to some stuff and I'm not here to air anybody's laundry, but I do know that Manny felt wronged. And so I, I could just speak to Manny's always meant well. He's one of the most pure, kind people I've ever met, maybe kind to a fault. But um, yeah, you know, grown men are going to say what grown men are going to say. They're going to do what they want to do. But if I, if I have to make an official statement, um, you know, Manny's my guy. I, I ride with Manny. And I will say that I formed a very good relationship with Brandon when I was down in Tampa. Everybody knows about him picking me up in the Porsche and taking me around and whining and dining me. And um, even though he doesn't pay for his own valet, I've got to cover that. But 
what are you going to do? And then, you know, Vadim, Vadim on, supports the – it's true. It's true. He did the he did the oh I don't have cash or whatever. The hell he does. Pull that one out, bro. Can I tell so, you he so. lied? To, he lied to everyone, Jeremy. You you keep promoting on our podcast that we got the fanatics deal, the multi million dollar fanatics deal that we're sending Courtney to all of these uh, card shows off of our fanatics deal. He said we didn't get many money. Well, fanatics deal one on one, we're getting like five million a year off that. So. There's, there's, there's a big nice, difference. man. I, I, nice. Not, not little hobby money. That's big sports money, man. That's that's a oh, different okay. category. <laughs> big. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's some big dollars. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we're, we're we're also close with Vadim. And so, but I'm mindful of if it wasn't for Luca Nation and my wife and I, Courtney, Reckless Cards, we've supported Luca Nation since the beginning. Like the first ever cigar night was me, Courtney, and Cage wandering around. Like we picked up the cigars. I bought NFTs to show support, any event that they did, anything that we could share. And I'm mindful if it wasn't for Luca Nation, I probably wouldn't have met Brandon and formed the relationship, Vadim and rest of the, the members of the Alliance, Don, all those guys. And so, you know, they feel the way that they feel. Um, I have always been cordial with Andrew. We always offered our support. But if this is a draw land, uh, draw a line in the sand sort of thing, I, obviously that's a no brainer. I've got to, I've got to look out for Manny just as somebody else would do for their friend or somebody they care about. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, DPZ, well, we're not going to the national trying to fight with people or anything like that. I, I, I can, no, keep no, 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 no. I can keep it. It's nothing like that. You're not going to get clicks off of me, man. No, you want, I don't you want think me to that... train. I'm ready. You no. want me to train? <laughs> <laughs> Manny's going to get ready. No, no, you know what he's going to do? DPZ, he's going to text me tonight. He's like, do you remember when I did this thing? I'm so damn sore. He played basketball yeah. one day and dead for three weeks. <laughs> no, here's what, I, here's what I'll say. And, you know, I, I'm, a, you know, I'm a, a, a baby in the industry right now and, and with, with content and all of that stuff. And the hobby, really, I came in in 19. So I still consider myself a newbie. Um, I don't have this story history like a cage or, or a lot of these folks, you know, Bermamoth, the Dean, these guys have been doing it for a long time. Heck, I'm talking to guys right now. I'm going to shout out my boy, Joey Peapod, um, Ken Griffey Jr. Collector. He's been doing it probably since the late 80s, and he's still doing it. He never took a break. Oh, he did take breaks, but he came, he's like legitimate. Like these are the kind of people I'm talking to. I get the, the opportunity to talk to, and I get the opportunity to talk to these people, and it's exciting um i yeah, met them through different people um but you know getting to know everybody has been great i will say this i think that you know nobody's perfect everybody makes mistakes you know i'm catholic so we're in the middle of the lenten season and there needs to be that you know we need to have grace for one another as much as possible i think it was healthy today i think that conversation probably needed to be had i think that uh, i admire andrew for sitting in there and and you know you know taking that conversation head on i admire bro and and Vadim for having it and being willing to have that conversation. I think that it was handled fine and, you know, it was spirited at times, but I think that sometimes that just needs to be had. You know, I think we're in a culture now where there's a lot of passive aggressive nature and people that don't want to speak their mind. I think that today was an example of what happens when you just let it bent, you know, pent up a little bit. Um, but with that said, I think it all got put out there and I think everybody's better for it. You know, I think the people that are jumping in there, you know, encouraging the drama or that kind of stuff, that's, that's, that's a problem. But I think that, uh, you know, having forgiveness, having compassion and just moving forward, I know that, you know, I can speak for, for Andrew and for Kate, I mean, everybody that, you know what, it's, it's a hobby, it's fun, you know, and, and I don't think there's any ill will, you know, how things are perceived or how things are said can sometimes get, you know, can, can be received and land wrong. I will always say it's, you know, how something is lands and how, what it's, in, how it's intended to be said can be very, very different things. I've learned this myself with my job. You know, I'll say something and how it lands with my my people. I've got, you know, about two, 300 people that I have that roll up to me. And if I say a certain something to one of those people, um, you know, it could be perceived and land differently than I intended it to land. I think that happens a lot in our world. And because of that, um, you know, feelings can get hurt. We think things can get twisted around. You never know. And then there are some moments where we do things we probably shouldn't do, or maybe we regret doing. And then it's just, there's opportunity for growth there. We're all learning. We're all growing. Um, I think everybody just wants to move on and be happy. And, and I, I don't think drawing lines in the sand is something we should ever do. I think what we should always strive to do is find ways to forgive one another and to, to build bridges with one another and life short, man. I mean, there are people right now, there's, there's families that have children that are sick. And those of us that have children can understand 
this stuff, no one cares about this stuff. There are people that have significant others or friends or family members that are sick. I bring up sick because it's happening a lot. There are people that are struggling mentally. You know, I know you guys are a show of levity and I am just, I'm reeling right now. And I'm maybe just feeling that, but there are people, you know, if my job right now, it has nothing to do with banking. A lot of times it has to do with how are someone feeling, how, what the things are going through with life, you know, real serious issues and how they're managing to get out of bed every morning and, and trying to help people through stuff like that. It has nothing to do with banking. That's important you know we got to help one another out it's you know the, the the world that we live in with social media is is, is some can be very ugly it can be very ugly and people celebrate the ugly and, and so I, I love how you guys bring levity and bring fun i love how the hobby brings a great distraction and fun and the last thing we want to do is let that particular that, that, that scene that area that place that we come for an escape to be fun to be turned into something that's not fun and, and become like the politics of our country. That's become the fighting that some people have to endure within their own families. The people that are going through divorces, different things like that. There's a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. This needs to be fun. This needs to be enjoyable. I think that you guys bring a lot of that great energy. I think the Luca Tiger LeBron network gave me an opportunity. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful for that. Um, I, and I, I, I'm, I just, I, I'm so grateful for the, for my relationship and friendship with Bro Namath and, and Vadim, they're wonderful human beings, uh, done wonderful things, uh, very helpful to me. Uh, there's, and there's so many people within this hobby community that are just so great, um, mm -hmm. so willing to help. It's a beautiful community. And it's just hard to find negative there. I love the slap stocks, guys. That's where the first, that's one of the first things I listen to. That and uh, Luca Tiger Braun. So, I mean, I love those guys. Um, so, yeah, all, all the love of the world. Daddy Rips is a cool new guy I've met. I mean, that guy's a lot of fun. Jump on one of his his lives with his ripping because you will have fun mm -hmm. too. Uh, he's a character. He's a blast, but really cool stuff. Lots of good stuff. So with all that being said, I know I sound like Switzerland. I know I kind of sound like a priest, <laughs> a little bit of a mix of those two things, a priest in Switzerland. Yeah. But um, it's all hobby love, bro. It's all hobby love, guys. Thank you for being honest and approaching those those conversations, that topics. I think it's it's nice to have, and I think it's good to put it out there. Anyway, so let's talk about Too Thick Pod. What is going on? Why Too Thick? Talk, talk to me about the name. Unpack that for me. And then talk to me about your journeys and getting into collecting. All right. I'll, 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 I'll start with the Too Thick Pod. So I was actually, like I said in the past, I did content for Lucas Tigers. That's where I met Jeremy. So I'm forever grateful to be able to do content with them because I don't think I wouldn't have met Jeremy and Reckless Fam without that. So they did give me a platform for that. Met Jeremy, went to his whatnot, and this guy has the heart of a, like, like the biggest heart in the world. Him and Courtney, we were on whatnot. He was breaking on whatnot. This guy is the only breaker that was giving away stuff because they felt bad how much people were paying for breaks. And these are their people bidding up. It's their responsibility. He's giving people away. We're doing a WWE break, and I'm just trying to make the the chat laugh and have some conversation. Well, an Otis card. I don't know if you guys are like WWE, but an Otis card. And I was like, wow, he's thick. And then Jeremy started saying, wow, he's thick. And then Dewdrop, there's a wrestler named Dewdrop. And he's like, oh, she's thick too. And then we kept calling each other thick every time we saw each other. We're like, why don't we just, we kind of had a good connection right when we first started. Let's start a, let's start a podcast and let's call it Too Thick. And like you were saying, there's so much drama in the world. Let's do a hobby podcast where it's just entertainment because I'm not going to give any info, 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 info more. Wow, I can't talk. <laughs> this is exactly how the podcast goes. Um, Jeremy brings the actual like what you need to do in the hobby. I bring on what you don't need to do. And it, <laughs> it, it, it actually makes I lose money. He makes money. But I'm actually turning <laughs> I'm, it's actually switching right now. I'm, I'm, or not switching. It's actually going where I'm actually starting to make money. Thanks to, you know, bro name it. He took me under his wing and now I'm doing TCG and he's like my big mentor in the hobby right now. Shout out, bro. That's awesome, yeah. man. You know, uh, that's funny. It's like I, Jerry represents how you make money in the industry and I represent how you lose it. Uh, brother, I'm with you. I lose it too. I mean, thankfully I'm getting into some really cool Kangaroo Junior cards, but I'm selling all this stuff, taking the L's and just yeah. getting into stuff and I can sit on it. Right. You know, you don't have to always lose, right. You can turn it into something. It might take a minute to get out of it, but yeah. you can move yourself into things that will perform over time better. So that's a really important lesson. That's yeah. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I always, this, lose. I always lose. And Jerry, hey. it, it's so no. bad. It's so bad that we were at a card show the other day and they were like, oh, I love your guys' podcast. You're too thick. I love how Jeremy brings like the information and you just, you're funny. I was like, 
I don't know how to take that, but I appreciate you. <laughs> I don't know if that's a compliment or, or if that's an insult, but I, I thank you. They like it. So where are you guys? Where are you guys located? Are you, are you in the same town? Are you in different different? You live in different places. Like I know you're in Chicago, right, Jeremy? Or no, Detroit, Michigan. No, you're in Michigan, yeah, we're, right? we're so both. Where are you we're both at? in Michigan. We're both in Michigan. I'm near yeah. the Grand Blanc area. He's over in Jackson. So we're probably about 90, 90 minutes apart. And the one thing that I That's would add is from a from a, a show perspective, we just try to be who we are. Whether you like it, you hate it, you love it. And so there's days where I'm a little more serious. There's days when I'm just a complete idiot. And there's days where it's just like two guys bantering. There's days where we argue with each other. And we're just who we are. And we just try to share. I think being transparent is something that's lacking in this space. So we, we try to make it a point to talk about what we're doing with our collections, the thought process behind it, and what we expect to see, what works, what doesn't work without like ever pumping anything or suggesting what somebody should spend their money. Just like, Hey, this is my experience. This, this is how it works for me. And so I found for myself, like I've really gravitated towards like the educational space of the hobby. I'm a systems and process guy. So I love to identify like what works, what strategy works, what can I do to implement to make my time in the space more fun? Manny just likes to be a knucklehead. He likes fart jokes. You know, he'll giggle for 15 minutes, fart and fall asleep. And so it brings like an interesting <laughs> dynamic. And, and the one thing that we decided to do was we're going to go to some shows and we're just going to do lives and talk about the show. We're going to interview vendors, dealers. We're going to talk to the promoters. We're going to give feedback of what's going on at the show because sometimes social media is BS. You might hear that the hobby's dead and then we're at a show with 150 people and you know we're doing $10,000 worth of deals in a day. Like that's That's not jiving with what you're seeing on Insta. So uh, so far it's worked. People have really liked it. We've been very fortunate to get some cool guests. And, you know, the most important thing to me is we've had a lot of fun along the way. You know, I'll use them. I want to mention a metaphor that I've learned is since this is a collector series show. <clears throat> We're talking about collector series. Hold on. Let me take a drink out of my cup here. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> the mayor. <laughs> hey, you guys got to get, you a, you gotta get him a too thick tumbler, man. We got to get him the too yeah, thick just... tumbler, Manny. I do need a too thick tumbler. I definitely need one of those. Uh, so what I will say is um, it, the collector, you, you talk about there's there, there's perceptions in the hobby of things are up and down. Of course, it's going to be cyclical. The nature's you know, it's cyclical. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. I think the economy is going to go up. It's going to go down. But you can almost insulate yourself. It's almost like think about all the fish in the ocean. Mm -hmm. When there's a storm coming and a hurricane coming, where do they go? Where do all the animals go? They go down. They dive deep. They dive deep into the water, deeper, to become insulated from all the the all the archaic nature of the ocean and the, the top, you know, the, the, like the, you know, that that zone that's closest to the surface, because that's where all the the drama, that's where all the energy, all the, you know, they, they can insulate themselves as the further the deeper they go. I I I will uh, compare that to in the hobby, the deeper you go the more insulated you are from all the stuff that keeps, keeps changing. Yes, it's great for hobby content. It's a gift for hobby content. It's a gift for hobby content. But the ups and the downs, and this card's going up, this card's going down, this person said this, this person said that. It's great for hobby content. It's, you know, our society lives and breathes off that stuff. But when you get down deep, you're digging in to the deep cuts on a record, right? I'm going to use a thousand analogies here. You're getting into that 15th song on the record, that nobody really listens to and you're, you're you're getting lost in it getting deep into the collecting atmosphere i'm doing it with like i keep talking about some of these people i'm talking to and you're on like freedom cardboard that's a that was a website before blowout mm -hmm. start going back there i mean just talk about the old testament of our hobby you know the new testament's all this stuff i keep using the analogies just you can tell them just let get deep and get into the very origins of what, where things are happening and why people collected in the first place. Start talking to some of these people that don't even have an Instagram, mm -hmm. don't want to have an Instagram. Heck, they don't want to, like that guy I, I mentioned earlier, he did not want to come on the show and share his secrets. I had convinced him, you got to come on, man. And the stuff you learn, you're like, holy, it's like mind-blowing stuff, but you don't get that because that guy's been doing it for 30 years, like mm -hmm. a cage. He's been doing it forever. But this guy's been grading cards himself and gemming at like you know 50 to 80 percent rate for the psa 
because he just knows how to do it. This is stuff like these are pe these are people that exist. It's like the iceberg analogy. I think I used in Wheelbox. It's it's so deep, and there's you just start chipping away. You can insulate yourself from all that all that noise, and you can learn so much, and you can get excited about the hobby down there. Anyway, that's sorry. I'm, I'm ranting a lot today. I'm sorry. This is about you guys, and I'm turning it into my show. Let's go. Carry on. I like carry it. on. I like no, it. I'd carry on. Sorry. <laughs> No, I, I think so, that's, that's a good point. And I, I will tell you, uh, I think getting deep is important. That's why I have four children. Didn't. Shh. That was just some. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long, stupid day. Shout out it's to Courtney great for helping me get four kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been okay. a great, stupid day. He, he's lying. His four incher ain't going any deep. <laughs> Alex, or hey, man. Man, that in. This Don't episode that's is airing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but that is that is beautiful. This is just how we are. We This I mean, should have been the first live collector series where we just yeah. went on. You know, maybe we'll do that at some point. I'll just jump on a live and the three of us can like do a pseudo interview again. And um, <laughs> we probably should have just done that. But I'm not I don't want to stir up stuff. You know, we're not going to try to be capitalistic here and jump yeah. on the situation. But um, anyways, oh, yeah, I think it's levity is wonderful because, you know, it's a hobby. Right. There is people making money here and living and dying by it, spending a lot of money, myself included. Um, a lot of us have the security of a job, a career that helps us sort of like float that along. Some folks are really all in. I have a lot of respect for people that are all in um, because it's they're really they're putting they're pushing all their cat they're all the chips towards the middle of the table. What have you? So you, Jeremy, you talk about going to shows. Um, the hobby's doing well. Manny, we're talking about <laughs> nonsense. Just whatever it is you're talking about. Yeah. And which so far we haven't gotten there yet to a. We'll get to a subject, but talk. Uh, tell me about your collecting journey because that's really what we always start with. How did you both get involved in the hobby? Let's start with you, Manny. How did you get involved in the hobby? What brought you into cards? Did you always collect, or is it something? It, what kind of cards do you collect? Where, where's your your lane, so to speak? So, I started back when I was a kid, um, early '90s, mid '90s on Topps cards because my uncle collected '80s Topps, '70s Topps, and he would make me go into his room and help him like write down every card he had and what go through the Beckett book and say what they were. He had a huge collection. Um, he's, he was paying me in cards to help him out. So um, I was getting a lot of tops cards. Little did I know they're junk wax. He set me up just to do his work, but that's okay. Um, but then I, when I got, you know, the typical went to school, start playing sports, got out of cards and, um, bought zion actually when he was hurt do you remember the first year he got hurt um i i, I i'm a big college basketball guy so i mm -hmm. watched Zion play at duke i'm a michigan state guy and we beat zion in the elite eight to make it to the final four but i was like man this guy's gonna be a stud i like him let me buy his card and it was uh the base 60 bucks 50 to 60 bucks and i bought it like 10 or 12 of them just like i want them you know and then he came back and it soared to like a thousand dollars at one point. And I was like, dang, I could do this more often. Got into it. Um, I wanted to get someone that was knowledgeable in the hobby. So I listened to content, heard um, the daily podcast. And I was like, I need a, I need to help. I want to help. It helps me learn if I'm actually working with them. So I worked with Cage and Andrew for a year. Um, and that was when I met Jeremy and I was allegedly, like, you know, allegedly, man. Yeah. Allegedly I worked. I guess, Supposedly I, guess. I didn't do anything. Um, so then I met him. You're a terrible human being. Rise above man. You piece of I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible. I'm scattered brain. So I've been told, um, but I met Jeremy and the reckless family and I fell to them and now they're my pro their, their problem is me now. So, um, but yeah, I've been collecting. I actually start PCing. Um, we we PC two. I PC two things: Derek Jeter and um, Nomar cards. Because my wife is a Yankees and a Derek Jeter fan, I'm a Nomar Red Sox fan. So we always clash about it. So if there's any cards that have both of them on it, I like to collect them just because it means more to me. Because my wife, it means something with my wife. Um, we also collect two thick cards because, or like thicker athletes. Oh. Like, so we, we have like a thick of the, on our podcast, we have a thickest of the week segment where we just go in 
and talk about a thick athlete. It doesn't, and, and it's not just, you know, fat, it's a lifestyle. So Jeremy one day was like, let's do cocaine bear. I said, let's do uh, um, Danny, uh, Danny Burgers on the Mets. Um, when that came out. So oh, we, you mean uh, Vogelback? <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we do like two yeah. thick like players. He got um, cheeseburger like lacy cards. So we just love doing that kind of stuff. That's hilarious. Yeah, we we had the luxury of having Vogelback on the Mariners for a minute, and I have a friend of mine that pitches for them, um, and he just <laughs> he just gave me these stories about Vogelback. They're hilarious. It's like Chris Farley stories. Like they're. Yeah. They're rich. They're awesome. <laughs> like they make you just. I sat right behind his whole family in one game, like, mm -hmm. and he had a, he has like a, a two brothers. They look exactly like him, and it just it's the act. The, I, it was it's pretty awesome. I couldn't imagine being in a room with all those guys. It must be a blast. It's funny. Oh but yeah, that's funny. Definitely cool. So how about you, Jeremy? Oh, um, I think we already yeah, kind of so talked. We talked about yours already, but let's do it again for the sake of this episode, since you guys are both together. Yeah, definitely collected as a kid. I grew up in one of those towns where uh, the card shop owner was weighing packs and uh, was kind of like the guy. It's like, hey, how much money do you have in your pocket? It's like, ah, I've got 30 bucks. And he's like, well, here's a Dimitri Young card. He's going to be the greatest baseball player ever. You need to buy it. Uh, so we <laughs> dealt with that sort of people, which probably soured the experience. And that's why, you know, we're yeah. like anybody that comes up to our table, whether it's Court and I or me and Manny, it's like the kid wins. We will give the kid the greatest deal. We want him to have the best experience. So that way they stick around. Uh, but, you know, it, it, I was so entrenched with work. Like outside of work, I thought about work. When I was sleeping, I thought about work, making babies, thinking about work. And the only word I cared about was EBITDA. So it was New Year's Day. E EBITDA. EBITDA. Man, he's EBITDA, just talking, EBITDA, EBITDA. you're talking my language, brother. I don't want to talk about EBITDA right now. <laughs> yes. So that that was life. That was life. You know, my kids would, you know, spill milk. And I'm like, you know, that that gallon of milk was, you know, $30 to 10%. You better go clean it up. Let's go. Like it was just a different vibe in the house. And so on New Year's Day, we were going to go get an arcade machine for our basement. We have like Mortal Kombat. We've got the TV, the Xbox, all that stuff for the kids. And I had come out and my friend had all of his sports cards on the table. And I just thought to myself, Leak, you fucking dork. Nobody plays with cards. You're a grown man. Get your stuff together. Well, the, the, the place where we're going to buy the car, the, the thing was closed. And so he showed me and, you know, it was like, oh, this is kind of cool. And then I just went out and I just like, you know, spent a couple grand on just whatever I could. And I was so confused because so much had changed from back before that there was all these brands, all these parallels. I'm like, holy shit, this is overwhelming. And so uh, anything that grabs my attention, I, I, I hate being a novice. I, I want to be at the at the forefront. So I'm like, well. I'm going to dive head first and I'm going to know everything there is to know about cards. And so my free time is consumed with, with education of the hobby space now. I love how you, you dive in with $2,000. I remember diving in with like a hundred dollars and going, ah, oh, man, this is a lot of money to spend on a piece of cardboard. It was like, a star I was shocked to me for that. You're like, yeah, I just went to spend a couple grand. And I didn't know what I was doing. I just, Got a you know bull bull and you know I Ooh. he's yeah you know that guy big tall guy basketball it's gonna work out I was so I just wanted to buy my guy my friend on the, the uh, Mariners I wanted to get his card so I just went on Amazon to find it right I didn't go to eBay um, anyway so that that it's interesting how we get into it and the number grows you know that number. You start getting excited about cards that are way more expensive than they should be and that you should be spending on them. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. But so what's the uh, tell me, so how often are you guys putting out show? You're a weekly show? Are you a biweekly show? Are you a three times a week show? Or is it just whenever the heck you guys feel like a show? We've we've been pretty consistent at two to three times a week. We've been doing a live after each show. And so we've done a lot of shows. It's, it's been a little overwhelming. There is a tremendous amount of work that goes into it. And I think we would both be the first to admit that we don't even do the greatest job marketing it. And if it wasn't for Courtney, you know, clipping stuff and doing a lot of like the legwork yeah. behind the scenes, uh, it might just be a podcast that's potentially sitting on Manny's computer, not even loaded to anchor or YouTube. So uh, yeah, no, we've been hitting it two or three times. I think the lives right after the, sh after any show are good. Uh, you know, we, we made it a point for the first, however many episodes not to have any guests because for us, we wanted people to either like us yes. or hate us. 
right. but to tune in. And after we built our our fan base or our core audience of Thickalos, um, shout out Thickalos, I mean, yes, yep, <laughs> uh, yeah. And so, yeah, we're a few times a week, and then we're, we're planning some other stuff. But at the end of the day, when it starts to feel cumbersome or not enjoyable or just a tedious task that you don't want to do, that's when we'll pump the brakes and pull back, just because you know family and you know we have other responsibilities outside of this space totally totally i started bringing guests on right away because i'm terrible and i needed to have other people distract from the terribleness so i'm really thankful yeah. that i was able to grow into a little less terrible over all this time having all these really great fantastic guests on so at least you guys aren't terrible I love your content. Don't I'm forget. just kidding. I'm not yeah, being self self deprecation. I, I love I love your content. I used to do the auction show, um, and it was bad because I was by myself. And I, I couldn't Jeremy imagine being by myself. Jeremy used to make fun of me because I'd be like, um, 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 the whole time because I hadn't. Um, it sounds yeah. like you're just like talking to yourself i couldn't do it i'm glad jeremy is good at like bouncing ideas off me no it's Let's, good to have a partner it's good to have a partner talking by yourself has got to be hard man i don't know how people sucks. do it by themselves yeah I, I i do not frown upon anybody who makes any sort of content in this space unless they're not being outright hateful towards somebody because it yeah. does take a certain amount of fortitude to to put yourself out there because you know at the beginning you're like well, what did that comment mean? Well, what did that comment mean? Are they hated? And I think most people who are in this space mean well, you know, they have the, the best intention. And so you, it's just like you go to a, a, a grocery store or a restaurant, not everything on the menu is for you. You know what I mean? doesn't mean that it's yeah, bad. It's just, it, it's not your, it's not your particular yeah. taste. Mm -hmm. It's a good analogy. I mean, I get yelled at for a living, like really bad stuff. You know, because you're dealing with people's money and, you know, people get pretty keyed up about that, right? So you get a lot of nasty stuff and deal with a lot of very difficult, uncomfortable situations. So I've gotten pretty used to it. So the online stuff doesn't, you know, there's people on a keyboard, not to not try to be, you know, I'm not trying to act big or tough, but it's like, it's just words on a, on a, on a keyboard. I mean, sometimes it's easy to just kind of say stuff that's easy to do. And people have gotten used to doing it these days, but, you know, it, it, to me, it's, it's much more meaningful when it's face to face or when it's in person, that's happened quite a bit been spit on before um twice actually um and just and this was before i was in my current position but just like you know people human reactions human behavior is a very interesting thing but i think you, you you put yourself out there it's fun i worry about if i did it myself alone i just, just start turning into like some kind of a sermon so i'm like i gotta be careful uh <laughs> but I, I i do think the one of the reasons why I like, and I think it's important to have people on this, this show to talk about collections and talk about their collecting experience and talk about the hobby is because I don't know anything about the hobby. I mean, I do. I've learned a lot over the last three years. It's been a great distraction. I've, I've listened daily to different, you know, mainly, you know, the Luca group and then some slab stocks and, you know, uh, Scotty B. Cars is great with baseball. Uh, Filmington's a really good guy. Um, I, I, there's, there's, there's many I'm forgetting. Uh, crossover. Those guys are really cool. So I've learned a lot through just kind of like a, a letting that kind of, you know, you've probably done the same thing. So have you, as you go through and you listen to it, because I feel like, gosh, I'm learning, but I still don't know anything. I still don't. I still have so much to learn. So I don't want to speak from any authority. So that's why I feel like it's good to have other people on. I know a lot about baseball, so I could speak a little bit confidently about the game because I played it and I played it through, you know, longer than just like T-ball and on in high school and all that. But I do think, and I wonder with you guys, are you influenced by anybody when you watch this content when you before you started your show is there something that like influenced you to go hey this is how we want to do our show and this is how we don't want to do our show so one thing i, I want to say and i think that's why a lot of people gravitated towards lucas as like you know their primary podcast one it was daily and two i was always i was always in appreciative and i recognized you know, Andrew had a certain level of wanting to learn. And I think that that made the pod very consumable for most people because some of the questions that he was asking are very much legitimate questions that people asked myself, Manny included, as we were, you know, growing within the hobby. So that is, that is not lost on me. I, I actually have always admired that about Andrew being inquisitive and asking questions and trying to understand the way Cage looks at something. Um, for me, I'm, I'm not influenced, but I have a little bit of a di different background where I'm kind of 
you know, I kind of look through the lens that most people have an agenda. So I try to sift through that. Manny might have a different answer. So I haven't been influenced now. Yeah. I'll just leave it at that. Manny, you can talk my, my son. Well, my son. I, yeah, this is going to sound corny, but no, um, it's not. It's going to sound Jeremy, great. <laughs> Jeremy's helped me a ton. All I, like I told you in the past, all I did was lose. I, I understood what people were saying but I never did it. And kind of like you're saying, like, you understand what they're saying, but you don't know anything in the hobby until you actually do it yourself and you find your own lane. That was my problem. I was trying to find my my own lane for the last two years, and I just kept losing money left and right, left. But I was having a good old time, you know. I met Jeremy, and he we, we kind of built a relationship where he he's like my older brother. So he knows everything the way I'm thinking. So he's given me advice on stuff like for example we went to chicago skyline show um the luddock show we went there i had a game plan because i heard jeremy say this all the time buy teams in detroit like from chicago that are like detroit teams or michigan state alumni michigan alumni because we when you come back they're easy to sell i sold every damn card that i bought at the skyline show and i got good deals because they couldn't move that product so they couldn't move any Detroit players like the um, Isaiah Thomas type players. They they could not move them. So they're giving me good deals. And then they're a premium at, in Michigan. So Jeremy's helping me with along that way of like the process of doing that. I would also say Cage has helped me a lot. We went to Mint together and he was telling me tips like you're you're a baseball guy, right? I was trying mm-hmm. to buy Jordan Alvarez um, autos and he was like, do not buy jordan autos and i was like why he's a stud he's like the hobby doesn't like dh players DH, yeah. yeah and i wasn't trying and then he said if you do buy an auto make sure it's a bowman first do not buy autos that are uh, tops cards so him helping me on that aspect little tidbits there because i what my what my grail card i want and it's not even that expensive but it's a mookie bets red foil i'm a big red Sox guy so the red foil set like Mookie, Alexander Bogarts of the Bowman um, Auto. So I'm going to try to get some of those. So, Cool, cool. I, th- I think one thing, DPZ, you were talking about it is like you had some cards and you're like, I'm ready to part ways with this. I'm going to take that money and do something else instead of being stuck with these cards that I don't want. It's very similar to anybody that's carrying a couple extra pounds predominantly the thick lows that listen to this thing. Everybody knows like if you eat right and exercise outside of like some crazy health thing, you're going to get in shape yet. The actual practice of doing it is a different thing. And so I've actually been pretty, I've been proud of Manny because he's like, he's been very open on the pod about like what he's going through or how he's getting his ass kicked that he took some cards he was stuck with, moved them, got the capital, put it into other cards. And now like he's a little bit more regimented in how he's operating. And like, yeah, he was sure. I'm sure he's saying he's having fun, but nobody likes to lose money. Nobody likes to spend a thousand dollars and have 400. Like that's not a sustainable way of, of having fun. So I've been very, I've been very proud and happy for him seeing him make that. And so I think having relationships and having people you can lean on, uh, if it's a wrestling card, I know I can reach out to Drake's PC and he'll help me out. I know if it's TCG, I can reach out to Brandon. I know if it's baseball, I've, we have an army of people that you can reach out and talk to and lean on their expertise. I'm a big, I believe like if you're the smartest guy in the room, that's a bad room. Time to get out of that room. I like where this episode's going. It's not going traditionally the way these episodes go. Obviously it, I don't think it ever was destined to do that uh, for two reasons based on what kind of happened today. And then based on the fact that you two guys are on the interview um, together. <laughs> and so it's, it's going in its own direction, which I love. Um, so I'm just going to keep rolling with it. Um, I think when you talk about losses, it's interesting because there's two ways of looking at it. I mean, you obviously if you, you need to sell and, and liquidate and take money and you need, you need money for your family and all that stuff. You need to do that. I always caveat anything we talk about on any program, you know, be providential with your money. And of course I'm a banker. So I'll be very careful with your money, careful with your credit. Uh, don't overextend, be very smart about it. Uh, take care of your family first. Never. Put your family in a position where you're in trouble. The cool thing about cards is they're very liquid. You can sell stuff on eBay when they 
people they don't pay and then you get restricted for some reason. I don't know why that happens because people maybe complain that you canceled their sale because it took three and a half days to pay and you knew they weren't going to pay, but then you go and complain. I don't know what happens, but that's really annoying. Yeah. But outside of that, you can sell and you can get your money for the most part every time. You can go to shows. You can, your cards are very liquid, especially if you have the right cards. But you, you can either just take that money and just go home or you can take that money and go, I'm going to put it into a bigger card. I'm going to, I'm going to pool this. Even if I'm taking some L's here and there, I'm going to pool this money. I'm going to go buy said card that's over here. That's of a player. I love something that makes, you know, I'm lucky. I'm very fortunate that the player I love and the player that I started with when I was a kid, I started with when I first came back in and I'm now just, I'm have pretty much all of, that's all I have is Ken Griffey Jr. So I'm lucky. He's very valid. He's very relevant. He's a deep collector base guy. So I'm going to be fine with him. He's got nineties cards and those insert like 96 to 99 where I'm like, in the, I'm in law. I'm in totally good shape there. I'm lucky. I can go do that. So we've got to find that player. Like you got Michael Jordan. Maybe it is for you, Jeremy. Um, you know, Manny, it could be like, um, El Gacho or, yeah. or, some, or some, one of those what? <laughs> Bobo, what? Bobo, 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 Chupacabra <laughs> rookie card. Yeah, the Chupacabra. <laughs> Donna, Sana, Colita, da, da, da. Yes. Yeah. So I think, so basically you roll into, like, we can't be serious. I'm a Chingus no. way. <laughs> there is no way I'm here. I'm like trying to be serious. And like it go, you guys are like Dennis. You can only go so far before you're just we're just gonna stop you. Like you're getting too serious, man. Like, is there a point to this damn story? I'm like cage in a way. I, I go, <laughs> but the point is like I, you you can roll into a bigger card, and then that card, yeah, you have less cards, but you have cards that are probably safer. Mm -hmm. And definitely, if you ever had to move it, you don't really want to ever, but you can move it, you know, and then that's probably going to sell and you're going to be fine. So that it's a way to feel better about your losses as well. I guess that's the big, that's my whole freaking point, my huge roundabout point. You can feel better about your losses when you roll them into something that's great. I've kept track of every, I don't know about you guys, but have you guys kept track? What's your, your tracking system for like, I've kept track of every card I've bought since I came back in, what I've sold everything for, for tax reasons and for just kind of know my ROA. Overall, of it is, I've taken so many losses pretty much every year almost, but I'm still a 30% ROI based on the cards I've rolled myself into. Like, how, how does that look for you? You guys track that information as a collector, as a, as a, as a seller? Because we sell cards to buy cards, really. I think it's kind of what we do. There's dealer dealers. I, I mean, guess, tell me about that. I break that down for me. How do you guys look at that? So, we are, you know, we have a business. And that's just to ease the tax burden. So we track everything, every associated cost. So it's we're very fortunate in the sense that whether or not the business is profitable or not profitable, we'd be spending this money anyways. So it's more as a, you know, for a tax reason. But yeah, we, we do track everything. For Courtney and myself, speaking on us specifically, we are in the positive. And that's just because we're very, we're very, we buy in the off season in bulk. And we sell and it's not sexy. Like right now, everybody's getting ready for basketball. Everybody's buying baseball. I just spent the last weekend selling all my baseball and moving into buying football, knowing that we're doing a big ship show on a show this weekend. And you've got Chicago and the national coming up and football is going to be hot. And we know this, the cycle repeats itself. So it's not exactly sexy, but it's pretty, it's pretty a surefire way barring injury or crazy, crazy crime. And then you just buy the brands that you know are coveted. You stay away from the off brands. And so in that sense, we're, we're, we're pretty profitable. Now we do collect Patrick Williams and obviously yeah, if he doesn't perform, that. but that's stuff, that's stuff that we're going to keep. And so I'm, I'm good mm -hmm. with that. So as a whole, we, we operate it in a positive. How about you, Manny? Do you track all your losses and gains? Yeah, it's depressing. Um, it's big and red, <laughs> but I try to track everything. Um, <laughs> I can see it's I, big I, I, it's big and red. It's big and red. I can see how this. I'm totally getting your vibe now, man. Manny yeah. drives the. I'm not nothing against Jerry. Manny, you're hilarious, man. <laughs> I'm just it's telling like you, Jeremy I'm just like... Jeremy just makes fun of you. You're just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that guy. Yeah. I'm like a, I'm, I'm a punching bag. It's okay. Oh, I, I appreciate it. I, I, I love making people laugh. So if I can put a, one smile on someone's face a day, it's the best. 
my face hurts, brother. You, you're a funny guy. I'm so glad you guys, you guys are, you guys are awesome. It's so cool. What a cool episode. What a cool. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So you so getting back to Pat, patting ourselves in the back too much here. Uh, you, um, you have experienced a lot of loss in the hobby. <laughs> you're still here smiling and still losing money. Mm -hmm. Is that what's okay? Cause it's fun. I mean, it's I enjoy fun. doing it. It's fun to yeah. lose, lose money. Okay. No, 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 no. I mean, it sucks, but I'm actually, <laughs> I have this, <laughs> I can tell people, hey, don't do what I do. Um, but Jeremy, Jeremy's a big help. <laughs> having, having your group, your circle of friends in the hobby, make it a lot better. Yeah. I, I'm in the it hobby. Does. Yeah. I'm not putting my money like crazy. My kids eat well. They're on ramen for like the third straight day. Um, but they, when you have your group of people that you could just, I mean, we're, we're all older. We can't make, we don't make friends like we did in high school. I see more value of connecting with people rather than making money. This, right. Like I, I so, gained a brother. I gained a brother in Jeremy. Jeremy's laughing. Like you didn't have any friends in high school, Maddie. So let's, yeah, no, Jeremy, no, I, Jeremy, Jeremy didn't go to high school. So I don't want to hear. No, that, I, no, I think it's, I think that Manny's spot on with that. We're old. And so it's yeah, not it's like, where, we're gonna, where are we, where are we going to go to make friends? Huh? Nowhere. Where are we no. going to go? Starbucks tells me, please leave. You know, <laughs> Courtney, I, I got to beat Courtney off with a stick because I can't please afford leave. to pay for any more damn, any more damn yeah. kids. So what, mm -hmm. what else are you going to do? You play with little pieces of cardboard and you, you find other idiots. Yeah. So that's how we met. I got to, I got to beat Cordy off with a stick. I get kicked out of Starbucks. He does. <laughs> He does. They kick him. This kick is him insane. Out. Me. I don't even. I don't even know. I don't even. This is. I, I don't even know what. I, I, I got have. a question for you, DPC. DPC. I got up in one month. I got up to four thousand stars. You reverse engineer. You do the math. If you've ever read Automatic Millionaire, I do not qualify. Yeah. Based on your my coffee spending habits. Do you know? 4, do you know what's stars. screwed up about the? Do you know what's screwed about the star thing? Is that yeah, they, they, they move expire it from two hundred fifty to two. You. True story, That's and they the also went from one fifty to they went to one fifty to two hundred. So I roll in there, and you know, you'd think, you would think I see these people all the time. They see all my kids. They go, they see me roll in with the minivan. Okay, I have my big jack. I got like a, a nice, nice lifted truck, and you know, brand new like Rocky Ridge truck. It's really nice Ford, by the way. Awesome truck. <laughs> and I roll, and I try to drive that as much as possible. But I roll in with the van. You know, they're like, hey, you know, they know me. Oh, it's 150. Okay, well, it's now 200. Yeah, man, I don't have any. I haven't loaded my thing. You know, I was like two off, or like I was like 150, 250. You think they would just go here? Let's hook you up. You've been here so many times, right? No, she nope. waited for me to load my card. If you were like, to really, look, dude? if you were to look at my car in my center dash, is I've got like a stack of these like three and five dollar gift cards that they give me because half the time the nitro machine's broken and so i pull up and they're like i'm so sorry jeremy the machine is broken on a first name basis do you want to go with a hot coffee and i'm like no i'll just drive 20 minutes to the town over and i'll get it and this is after making the capital expenditure to have a whole coffee bar at my house which I love to brag about, but in reality, we all buy this stuff, yet we still go to Starbucks. Oh, no, I have it. Oh no, I, I I was like, hey, there's a fifty dollar burr grinder. There's a hundred and fifty dollar burr grinder. I need the hundred and fifty dollar burr grind burr grinder. Of knowing damn well, it's just gonna sit there and not gonna look good. I'm gonna look good. I bought a nitro machine, and if Amelia doesn't prepare it for me, so she'll prepare it, and I'll have nitro at home for like two days. But then, like, that involves work. Uh, Amelia's not here. Well, driving to Starbucks. No. You know, I know the best thing is I get in a phone call with him and he's ordering Starbucks, but his local Starbucks, once you're in, you're in. Like, you can't back out. Like, they put that curb right next to the thing. Oh, I feel you. He's ordering and they said, I hear the nitro machines, the nitro machines not working. And you hear him go, oh, shit, now I got to wait in line. So he's just all irritated because he's waiting in line trying to get out of the driveway. I was like dying laughing because he was throwing. It's so funny. It's like these are, these are truths, man. These are truths we all live with, dude, at Starbucks. I mean, I'm here in Seattle. There's like one on every block. And, <laughs> man, we're, we're constantly. And it's funny because you have all these like coffee stands. Where my wife's like, 
just like, why don't you keep going to start? I mean, because it's the same thing every time. You go to one of these coffee shops, and there's some, you know, I'm mean, where have we have our girls, right? Yeah. I know my daughters will be working on. I mean, I don't know. They're trying to kidnap, you know, girls, you know, young women through those coffee shops nowadays. I don't know about that. So mm -hmm. maybe I won't have them work there. But you go through there. And you you pay five dollars for your coffee. He just went right past that. <laughs> Sorry, I know. I I yeah. They go they and you go and you pay five bucks and you get the coffee and it tastes like crap. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, you you can go back and go, hey, can you fix this? And we're in the Pacific Northwest. We're not on the East Coast. I know everybody's got thicker skin over there. I you know over here you go you know I don't like you know can you can you fix this? Tears anger, all this stuff. Like I'm stuck drinking a crappy coffee for five bucks and they want a tip. So I go, I'm going to go to Starbucks. So I'm going to spend money, but I'm going to get the same thing every time. And if they don't like it, I can go back and they'll go, Oh, yeah, we'll fix that for you. No problem. Sorry. We, you were going to ask me something, Danny. Yeah. I don't know what, what. Yeah. I, I got a baseball question for you. Let's um, go. Why the Let's hell go. is Mike Trout so much, so expensive when he's always hurt. And uh, you look at his performance and it's just the same as Albert Pujols um the first 10 years of their career I, i'm curious because everyone's so hyped about mike trout he hasn't won a playoff game he kind of did, dug his own grave when he signed two extension contracts and now he's gonna just imagine if you had the number one number two player with otani and now otani could sign with someone else and win multiple rings without mike trout is mike trout going to be like in the future just be in the wasteland no, two reasons why Trout is so expensive. A, um, no one has seen the first 10 years of pure dominance from a war standpoint, wins above replacement, than Mike Trout has seen. But I've been moving all my stuff into cards like the one I'm about to show you, which is in my opinion, this is good. Yep. This is my number one card. And it's the most rare card. It's out of 100. You can see it. Ooh, that's nasty. This Atomic is refractor. Atomic Woo! Refractor. It's a Mike Baker Black, I'm, which I'm some people think is thinks it's stupid, but whatever. It's uh, out numbered out of 100. This whole show has gone all kinds of different ways. It normally is, but that's okay. We're gonna roll with it. So show. this is this is a big big card. Um, that's awesome. I, I moved seven cards to buy this. So I have um, the 96 refractor in a PSA 10. I got the 99 last night. I secured it from the same from a guy that didn't want to sell it, but I worked it. And this is the kind of cards I'm buying now. You have to convince the guy to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to work awesome. on them for a while. That's mm -hmm. the kind of cards you got to. That's the collecting that I'm excited about. I'm hoping people get excited about and get into. It's ex it, that kind of collecting because it's like uh, it's the essence of collecting in itself, like trying to. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at you right here. Okay, there's the camera. Um, <laughs> I'm looking over here, looking over here. Um, that's that's what I, it's all about. So why don't you guys, we'll send this off. Today was kind of cool. We'll circle this all the way back. Today was kind of crazy. Um, but I think we're all going to, you know, grow and learn and get better. Um, be happy, be positive, you know, have love for all. And, you know, just try to grow as people. And I appreciate Manny being so graceful. I appreciate Jeremy being so graceful. Appreciate Vadim Bro for being honest. I appreciate Andrew for being courageous and brave and then taking it on. Um, I appreciate Cage for being funny. I appreciate, you know, these these wonderful people that allowed me to purchase some really amazing cards. It, it sounds like Jeremy really appreciates his wife. Um, yeah, he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we both we all appreciate coffee, but we cannot stand when stuff don't work. Yep. Um, we spend unnecessary amounts of money on things that make coffee, but we don't use them. And yeah, man, am I forgetting anything, guys? Round it out for me, sick boy. No, I mean that was everything. Just make sure uh, if you do like our content and how we kind of are bantering, yeah. make sure you yeah. follow the Too Thick on Instagram, Twitter. YouTube, we go we go live every or we go live every week and have a guest and try to do two to three episodes a week. Um, shout out to DPZ to having us on. I do appreciate you. Um, thank you um, for giving us the platform. And just like he said, because you can screw people's eBay, make sure you pay.
for your, what you buy. Thank you. Pay for what you buy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jeremy, anything you got to say, brother? Uh, yeah, no, I just did. Th thank you very much for having us on. I appreciate it. I know today was an awkward day for, for many people. And I know that there's a couple of people who are probably in the middle, which is a, an odd spot to be on. I'm glad that we were able to have a, a, a fun conversation, but um, be just treat people the way you want to be treated, man. Look out for one another. Again, this is, you know, for a lot of us, this is just hobby. It's escapism. And you know what? If you put good out there, good will come back to you. And so uh, lastly, I'd just like to close and say, you know, you're welcome to everybody for me being me. You're very, very welcome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. You're awesome. We, we, <laughs> always, we, always close, me. We, always, we always close the show by saying we enjoyed, I hope you enjoyed your hobby release. And it seemed like there was a lot of a release going oh, it was on. Big today. release today. A, a lot, lot of, of release. Big release. So I hope everyone enjoyed that hobby release today. With nearly 40 years as the most trusted resource for collectors, dating back to the first Beckett magazine in 1984. Beckett has been the brand that bridges generations of the hobby. We're happy to be partnering with Beckett and look forward to keeping you all updated on the big things happening at the company in 2023. Beckett, it's the name you know and the name you can trust.